After watching this video, you will be able to do projects with Triax. In this video, I will introduce Triax as AC switch and answer six important questions about Triax. And in addition, I will tell you significant points and precautions about them and test basic circuit of Triax that really works. Please stay with me in the rest of this video. Look at this little beautiful component. How useful you are. This is Turiak, an electronical AC switch, one of my favorite components. I don't know why, it is mysterious for many people. But don't worry, I am here to clear up many ambiguities about this lovely component. Without dealing with right things, I gonna talk about basic circuit. This is a microcontroller and this is an AC light bulb. How can I turn this light bulb on or off through MCU commands? Out pins of this microcontroller can provide only three states, 0 volt, 5 volt and high impedance. It is not capable to turn the light bulb on or off by itself. So we need an external power source to power up the light bulb and a switch to control the state of the bulb by MCU commands. We have a microcontroller, a light bulb, and an external AC power source. The component that is going to switch electricity to turn the light bulb on or off is Triac. But it is not as simple as seems. We need to know more about Triax. Triax are three pin components and this is their schematic symbol. Here are pins, gate pin, anode one and anode two pins. Gate pin is for triggering the switch and anodes are for passing electricity to the load. In this case, the light bulb. Since Triax are AC switches and AC means electricity in either direction, it means that Triax can pass electricity in both directions. It seems easy. Just connect gate pin of Triax to one of microcontrollers GPIO and then it is done. Yes, it is true, you can do that with some considerations, but it is not safe and optimal. It is better to connect gate pin of Triac to microcontroller with an intermediary. This is MOC3021 optocoupler, an opto Triac. Inside this tiny chipset, there is an LED and a small Triac. Look at this. We can turn the LED on to trigger this tiny Triac and then use the tiny triac for triggering main triac. Here like this. Phase and neutral are connected here and the triac is connected with light bulb in series. The small triac trigger main triac gate by connecting it to phase. There is two resistors. First one is for protecting LED inside 3021 from overcurrent and second one is for protecting gate pin of main triac. If you put 5 volt on GPIO of the MCU, this LED will turn on and the LED will trigger the tiny triac and then tiny triac will trigger main triac and finally main triac will turn the light bulb on. I will use tactile switch instead of MCU. Here is the tactile switch. Yes, it works. When I press the tactile switch, the light bulb turned on. And when I release the switch, the bulb turns off. Here we can control the state of an AC light bulb with 5 volt commands. Let's review 6 important questions about Triax. Question number 1. What happens if somebody change phase and neutral places? Nothing, it will work properly. Somebody thinks that Triax can only switch phase wire, but it can switch either phase or neutral. So don't worry about how user will connect plug into outlet. 
and also it is no matter to change bulb and triac places. Therefore, all of these circuits will work fine. Question number two. Are anode pins different? The answer is yes, they are different. From switching aspect, there is no difference between anode 1 and anode 2. I mean they act like an ordinary switch which pass electricity in either direction. But from triggering aspect, they are different. Look here in a schematic symbol of triac. One anode is beside gate pin, here this one, and the other is on opposite side of gate pin. The anode on opposite side of gate pin is eligible to trigger gate pin of triac. Let's look again to the basic circuit. Here we trigger gate pin through this optotriac by anode on opposite side of gate pin. This one. So don't accept this one to work because we triggered gate pin through this optotriac by anode beside itself. Here this one. So this circuit will not work. You may wonder why I call these anodes like anode beside gate, anode in opposite side of gate. And I don't call them by their numeric suffix like anode 1, anode 2. Because it may differ in different part numbers and it causes you to make mistakes. Question number 3. Can I touch the tab? Here the metallic part of component is named tap. Its main job is to hold a heat sink to cool down the component. It is obvious, yes, you can touch it, but it is likely that electrocute you. In most part numbers, it is connected to one of anodes. Since anodes are usually connected to high voltage, touching this area may cause electrical shock or even death. Before touching the tab or the heat sink, you must check the datasheet to ensure that the tab is connected to main voltage or not. Question number 4. How triacs can dim a light bulb or control a speed of AC motors? It is complicated. The triac itself can't dim a light bulb. It needs other components or in some cases it needs MCU and programming. To clarify the answer, I gotta say that an AC power line waveform is sinusoidal and we can calculate RMS for it. In a digital dimmer circuit, we must detect the moment that sine wave crosses zero volt point and then switch the triac off for a while and then switch the triac on again to control RMS as desired to dim a light bulb or other purposes. In this case, we need a fast AC switch and the triac is exactly what we want. In one of my next videos, I will explain how to build a digital dimmer with all points, tips and tricks and discuss about RMS and the theory. Question number 5. Can triac switch DC loads? The answer can be either yes or no. Already we said that triacs can pass electricity in both directions and it seems easy to answer yes immediately. But actually the answer is no because we didn't consider another weird fact about triacs. Indeed triacs can switch DC loads on but they can't switch them off. I'm gonna talk about this weird fact. Triacs can simply be triggered by applying voltage on their gate pin and then the triac starts to conduct electricity on its anodes. If I ask you what to do to turn the triac off, I guess your answer is something like this. Just stop applying voltage on gate pin or release this button. The fact is this. For switching off a triac, it is not enough to just cut voltage from gate pin. It is necessary to pull down anode current to zero somehow in the same time. Let's do a simple experiment. When I press the tactile switch, the motor starts running. But when I release the switch, motor do not stop. 
To stop the motor, I have to disconnect power supply and connect it again. It is silly. Imagine that you want to switch off a DC motor, but you have to pull its current down to zero. I mean, you have to switch it off to switch it off. Even though it may have its application, but it is not much useful. Triox are useful in AC because AC frequency is something between 50 Hz to 60 Hz and it reaches to zero volt about 100 times to 120 times per second. And when you leave the gate pin alone, in next half cycle of AC, the current on anode pin will reach to zero and the Triox will shut down. Question number six. Which part number should I use for a light bulb? Depending on maximum current, power dissipation, and some other considerations, you can choose best part number for a particular load. Other factors like shape, size, price, package, weight, availability, market, thermal considerations, and so on. All of these parameters are available in datasheet except price and market issues. There are many parameters. But three of them are critical to consider max voltage, max current, and max RMS current. These parameters may differ in different countries. For example, in United States, standard voltage is 120 volts RMS with 60 Hz frequency. It means that maximum voltage in US is about 169 volts and maximum current is calculated according to the load. For example, this is a 100 watt light bulb, so we can calculate approximate max current and max RMS current. We know power is equal to voltage multiplied by current and voltage is equal to current multiplied by resistance. Then by doing this simple mathematics, we can reach here. Maximum current is equal to 1.17 amperes and maximum RMS current is equal to 0.83 amperes. By taking a look at datasheets, we can find out all of these triacs can drive this bulb. Since BT131 is smaller and cheaper, my choice is BT131. It is not much hard to choose proper part number for a particular load. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.